Hello, welcome to Board Game TV. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's Tournament Thursday. And we're going to be starting a new playthrough. <clears throat> now, I already know I've already started a playlist with Sentinels of the Multiverse. But I went ahead, I went back, and I deleted those old videos. And <clears throat> I want to tell you why. Is because um, I have everything now. And with the exception of the collector's box, but I have all the promo cards, all the sets, <clears throat> um, everything. And Sentinels of the Multiverse to me is a really, really good game that is very underrated, I'll say. It does have its fan following, but it's very underrated because <clears throat> in this world of <laughs> plenty of deck building games especially when DC and Marvel have theirs uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse has a, I think a little bit of a hard time finding a niche to a certain extent these are superheroes that nobody knows about um, I never knew about them they don't have any comics, they don't have any cartoons, there's no movies, TV shows, anything about these guys. So it's hard for people to get excited about these characters. And you know what, on my, my playthroughs before, I didn't really dwell, uh, dwell into the history of the characters or backstory or anything like that. So <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to play uh, on Tournament Thursdays for now we're gonna start playing Sentinels of the Multiverse and we're gonna start playing and telling the story of this universe more in depth and go with it as it progresses and we're gonna start with the base set here <clears throat> And we're going to start with heroes and villains from the base set. And then we're going to work our way to the next set in order of appearance, and the next set in order of appearance, and so on. And add any expansion packs and um, mini villain packs, uh, mini heroes that came in chronologically in the order uh, that they come in, um, that they came out. So like if this came out in 2011, you know, we're going to do all 2011 stuff. And that way it tells a story because um, it does tell a story. Um, Legacy has a pretty neat story through all these expansions. Uh, he ends up being replaced by his, his daughter, I believe, or his younger sister or, or daughter or something. Um, Certain heroes <clears throat> merge to form certain groups because they go on adventures together. Certain heroes uh, change their personality and, and some grow and, and, and all that kind of good stuff. And you never see any of that when you just do a regular playthrough or when I did a regular playthrough. So I want to try to fix that and um, show that this game has a really good story has a really good um, setting and is more than just some B-rate uh, superhero deck building game um, you see villains end up coming back reoccurring like they would and some even become good eventually um, and that is what I hope to show with this series. And we're going to, you know, read a little color of the blurbs from the cards, go over the origins of the heroes, the villains, and that good stuff. Now, sometimes I may do a promo card for a hero a little bit out of order, but because I think it might make sense or whatever, and I'm going to try to use every promo card. The only thing, uh, that uh, may seem a little off 
and I may do out of order is the environments. I'm going to try to do the environment to fit the theme. So like, you know, if Baron Blade attacks the Freedom 5, why not attack him at the Freedom 5 headquarters? Or if somebody's attacking a group of superheroes, why not do it in the city that the superheroes are based in? That sort of thing. So that is my hope uh, to do with this. And I hope you take a look at it and I hope you give it a chance. Um, because now that I have everything, and, and they say that this is the last. This is it for the card game. This is it. Um, they're done with it. We can tell a, a cool, full and complete story. And I can try to do my best with that. And and see some of these characters grow and change. And, and try to go over that with this. And that is my hope with this series. It's going to be a long one. It's going to be a long series. Uh, that is no doubt in that. And this game can get a little fiddly. I'm not going to use the app. Although I should. I'm not going to use it. Just yeah, with the little app on my little iPod and everything. It's a little hard to see for film. So we'll just do it the old fashioned way. And eventually we'll make our way to oblivion. Uh, so that is my little intro for this. We're going to go with our first adventure. And we're going to have the Freedom 5. And you're going to see the basic formation of the Freedom 5. Go against Baron Blade, who is uh, a reoccurring nemesis, and uh, uh, and and we're gonna leap from there. All right, so I have the game set up. So let's go over our heroes. We are using the Freedom Five, which is Legacy, Bunker, Wraith, Tachyon, and the newest member, Absolute Zero. So let's talk about them. Okay. Legacy. The Parsons family itself represents one of the most enduring traditions of the United States has to offer. The British, they have the monarchy. Americans, they have legacy. Ever since Joseph Parsons spotted British soldiers on the Charles River making possible Paul Revere's famous ride, the Parsons family has been protecting the United States from threats both near and far. Joseph Parsons himself had limited powers, only able to sense imminent danger. But each generation of the Parsons has inherited old powers and developed new. First, danger sense. Later, superhuman strength, eventually flight, and so on, and so forth. Today, Paul Parsons the Eighth is legacy, the founding member of the Freedom Five, and just as every Parsons before him, he continues to fight the forces of evil in the name of liberty and of the common man. Okay. So here's Legacy. All right, he is obviously the Superman prototype, and he has his power until the start of your next turn. Increase damage dealt by hero targets by one. Now, as a side note, there are a couple promo cards for him. But one of the promo cards is <clears throat> this one right here, and I just brought it out to show you. It's America's greatest Legacy. Gun Ho, one hero regains one hit point, may use a power. Now, this is supposedly. Um, Legacy's uh, father or grandfather. However, um, I think the way the lore goes is when Baron Blade killed him. <clears throat> Baron Blade killed him uh, in his villainous ways, and our newest legacy, uh, Paul Parsons the Eighth, took over. And I think learning from his father's thing that he decided to form a super team called and the Freedom Five. So we'll get into that in a second, but next one is Bunker. And this is Bunker here. And his power is draw a card. And he's obviously the Iron Man war machine of the group. I like to think of more of war machine because one, Bunker's a black guy, and two, um, he's a military guy as well, so he fits more in with Rhodey than he does with Iron Man. Uh, during the Civil War, the Ironclad Project produced the USS Monitor, a heavily armed ship that took part in decisive naval battle against the CSS Virginia. Less than a century later, the ongoing Ironclad Project produced another success, the personal armament Exo Chase's YS-1200. 
The suit allowed one soldier to do the work in an entire squad and operated in an elite battle, an elite battalion during World War II. Fifty years later, a new armored suit was developed, the Personal Armament Exochassis YS-13T, 1300T. When the government began its Freedom 5 initiative, Lieutenant Tyler Vance was selected to operate the bunker suit for the first time as part of a non-army campaign. Thus, Bunker became the second member of the Freedom 5, joining Legacy in the fight against the villains who threatened the world. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Wraith. Now, she's obviously the Batman, uh, Batgirl, Batwoman version here. Uh, she has a power reduce the next damage that would be dealt to the Wraith by two. Alright. Highly focused from a young age, Mia Andrana Montgomery excelled in school, graduating with degrees in both engineering and mathematics at age 17. Walking home from grad school one night, Mia fell victim to random gang violence. Her boyfriend was killed and she was hospitalized for weeks. Upon recovering, she vowed to never be a victim again, leveraging her family's wealth to hire trainers from many disciples of combat, disciplines of combat, Maia began patrolling Rook City at night as the Wraith, protecting those in her city who could not protect themselves. As a surprise graduation present, her parents gave her the reins to Montgomery Industries. Now Maia must balance two lives by day, the world's youngest CEO, by night, the protector of Rook City and the Freedom Five's fourth member. So obviously, she's a Batman. Clone. All right. Next up, we have Tachyon, and Tachyon is obviously the Flash. Uh, she has power, rapid recon. Look at the top card of your hero deck. You may discard that card. The most celebrated mind in the field of particle physics, Dr. Meredith Stinson, was the driving force behind the creation of the particle yield enhancing wavelength. While working on the device, a safety mechanism failed, sealing her within the testing chamber. Her team attempted to free her, but the machine finished its boot sequence, blasting Dr. Stinson's body with a stream of tachyons. Apparently unharmed, she returned to work, although she gradually noticed an increase in efficiency. Somewhat concerned, she examined a sample of her blood and discovered that her cells themselves had been accelerated. She tested the extent of her powers and found she could now move at superhuman speeds. When news of her findings spread, the government offered to fund her research as she became Tachyon, the third member of the Freedom Five. Okay. Alright, now we have Absolute Zero. Uh, his power is Absolute Zero deals himself one fire damage or one cold damage. He's kind of a mix. I guess you could say he's kind of like Mr. Freeze where he has to live in his cryo suit. But he kind of has the powers of Iceman. He's, he's, a, he's a little bit different, and he plays differently, too. A janitor at a cryogenics lab, Ryan Frost's life was literally put on ice when caught in a freak cryo explosion. His core temperature dropped to zero degrees, Kelvin necessitating the cryogenic freezing of his mangled and frigid body. Over a decade later, Frost's body was seized as part of the Freedom 5 initiative. He was operated on under the extreme conditions of a frozen operating room designed by Dr. Meredith Stinson. As he regained consciousness, Ryan Frost was offered a choice, live in a cryo chamber for the rest of his life or be outfitted with a mobility enhancing suit and join the team formerly known as the Freedom Four. Out of options, Frost became the hero known as Absolute Zero, rounding out the Freedom Five and fighting for good to pay off the suit that allows him to live a normal life. So. We get the story that at one point there was the Freedom Four, okay, and now has become the Freedom Five with Absolute Zero's membership. And this is where we're going to start off in the timeline. The Freedom Five has just been formed. Uh, Legacy's father uh, was killed not that long ago, and now we have the Freedom Five. And let's take a look at Baron Blade. Like his father before him, now he's obviously uh, kind of like a Baron Zemo, Dr. Doomish type, but I think more of a Baron Zemo. Like his father before him, Ivan Ramanat was brilliant. When his father died as the result of a battle with legacy of that generation, Ivan swore vengeance, becoming the self-proclaimed ruler of Mordengrad, the town that housed his father's weapon manufacturing plants. He became Baron Blade. 
He plotted his revenge, inventing bizarre and dangerous weapons. He held the legacy line responsible for his father's death, and he would eradicate them. He avenged his father by killing Legacy, but not before the powers of young Paul Parsons manifested. This next Legacy proved a much greater nemesis as his new powers included impenetrable skin. Desperate Baron Blade planned to destroy the world itself. He set about building his terrain repulsion beam, a device which would pull the moon into the earth. I didn't like, I don't know what that would be, but... Okay, so we have all our heroes' backstories somewhat. So we get the uh, probably Baron Blade was his fathers were probably on the side of the Nazis or something in World War II, kind of like the whole Captain America thing. And uh, his father was killed by Legacy's father or grandfather, one of them. And that uh, now he has sworn revenge. He's wealthy. He leads a country. He's got all these things. And he kills Legacy's father or grandfather. And has tried to kill Legacy. But he, so far he hasn't been able to. And Legacy probably to try to stop him or form the Freedom Four. And now, with Absolute Zero's arrival, the Freedom Five, and now Baron Blade is going to do, since he can't kill Legacy outright, he's going to do a um, destroy everything, pull the moon into the earth, and I guess in a roundabout way, that will kill Legacy. <laughs> All right. So Baron Blade has 40 hit points. We have the mobile defense platform is our environment. Um, Legacy has 32 hit points, Bunker 28, The Ray 26, Tachyon 27, Absolute Zero 29. And the way the game plays, if you don't know, or if this is your first time seeing a Sentinels thing, is the villain is going to go first. You're going to have at the start of the villain turn, and then you're going to have any start of the villain turn effects. You're going to play a villain card, and then you have any end of villain turn effects and then you're going to do the heroes they'll have their start turn effects if any they will play a card they will play a power and then they will draw a card and then it'll be the next hero's turn and then the next and then the next and next then we have the environment and you would do the start environment turn draw environment card end of environment turn very simple very thing the thing where this game gets fiddly is when you have to uh, calculate how much damage this one's going to take, and if you have all these modifiers like minus one or plus two or plus one and stuff like that. That's where the game gets a little fiddly. But once you get used to it, it becomes absolutely worth it. There's also a complexity chart that tells you in the rule book here which heroes and which villain, villains are highly complex. And, and basically, uh, <clears throat> as you can see, they have it like one, two, and three. And so... Uh, Absolute Zero is a 3, Bunker is a 2, Legacy is a 1, Tachyon is a 2, and the Wraith is a 1. And Baron Blade is a 1 difficulty. Villains have difficulty numbers, and so there we go. Okay, so we are now at the start of this timeline in the Sentinels of the Multiverse. Now, Baron Blade's thing says, At the start of the game, put Baron Blade's villain character card into play, Terrain Lair, Impulsion Beam, and Venture Side Up. And on a side note, I'm using the oversized villain cards. If you don't have these, I highly recommend them. If you're a Sentinels of the Multiverse guy, these are almost kind of like a must-have. They're so much better. So much better. So much easier to read. So much better. I, I can't do it. Another side note. You see this little symbol here? Okay, that is the nemesis symbol. Every villain and hero has one. As you can see, Bunker has the military thing. So this does not match. However, Legacy... And Baron Blade do match. And what that means is that they will do one extra damage every time they do damage to each other because they are the nemesis of each other. I put a little bit more uh, in their in their hits. So that's the way that goes. So alright, so at the start I put alright, we did research the villain deck for the card mobile defense platform and put it into play, then shuffle the villain deck. Alright, we did. And here's the mobile defense platform. Uh, it's a Baron Blade card has 10 hit points and it says Baron Blade is immune to damage so before we can even do anything to Baron Blade 
I have to destroy this. And a little blurb here says, until we take that blasted floating fortress out, Blade is practically untouchable. <laughs> Legacy, Moonfall, issue 9. And this is where the story starts popping with a lot of these. You start to get a lot of character from these guys. Okay, so there's that. And we're almost ready to go. And we'll be right back. Okay, let's get ready to go. One last side note I want to say is I'm playing with five heroes. Now normally, I think you can play with up to five. Normally I won't play with five heroes. It, it may be a little bit unfair to the villain. However, um, and I wouldn't recommend playing with five heroes as well. I, I Usually three to four is a good number for it. But I think thematically, you know, we want all the Freedom Five against Baron Blade for this first jump in our timeline to where we are now in this story okay so <clears throat> baron blade this is gameplay at the start of the villain turn if there are 15 or more cards in the villain trash baron blades drillier impulsion beam activates pulling the move into the earth game over all right so what is the trash the trash is the discard pile so if baron blade ever gets 15 or more cards in the discard pile at the start of his turn Game over, we lose. If he kills all of us, game over, we, we all lose. Now he kills all of us, is he? everybody's hit points go down to zero. When Baron Blade would be destroyed, flip his character card instead. And that's one of the things I love about this game is that he, he's going to play completely different from what at the first part. There is an advanced rule, but we're not going to be using the advanced rule. But if you want to make the game more harder, you can always use the advanced rule. Okay, so we don't have any. We we do have the, at the start of the turn. However, uh, we don't have 15 cards in trash. So let's play a card and see what happens. So we have Flesh Repair Nanites. Baron Blade regains 10 hit points. Well, it's good. It's a good time to get that card because we haven't hurt him. To such simple minds, my advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Baron Blade, Freedom Five, Issue 107. Okay, but there is a card now in the trash. <clears throat> All right, so it is Legacy's turn, and the heroes will start with four cards. You draw four at the beginning of your turn, and you play a card. You use a power, and uh, then you draw a card. If you do choose not to play a card and use a power, you can draw two cards. But let's see what we got here. We got to get that mobile defense platform taken out. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, I don't have any good cards. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this ongoing limited card, Surge of Strength. Now, an ongoing limited, an ongoing card is going to stay in his play area, which I'm putting above the cards. And it's going to stay in play until it goes away or something makes it go away. But the word limited means we can only have one type of this card. So we can only have one Surge of Strength in play at a time. There's probably, there's probably another Surge of Strength card in there, and if this card ever goes away, we could play it, but we can only have this one in play one at a time, because uh, it's limited. But we can have any more ongoing cards. We can have those. And it says, Increased Damage Dealt by Legacy by One. Excuse me, I have a train to catch. Paul Parsons, A Day in the Life, Legacy. Okay, so we're going to put that into play. And now we're going to use a power and uh, galvanize until the start of your next turn. Increase damage dealt by hero targets by one. So, uh, we'll take one of these little ones. And we'll, we'll just put this here because everybody gets plus one damage. And now, he'll draw a card. And that's the end of Legacy's turn. Now it's Bunker's turn. Let's see what we have here. Hmm. <sighs> Okay, I think I'm going to put this equipment card. This is Grenade Launcher, and it's a limited as well. He can have more than one equipment card in play, but he can't have another Grenade Launcher in play. And it says, 
Bunker deals one target, two projectile damage. He may deal a second target, two projectile damage, and may deal a third target, one projectile damage. So we're going to put that into play. When the smoke cleared, all that was left was that giant army robot, Citizen Dare, Sunrise, number 16. So we're going to put in play, and we're going to play his power. We have two powers we can choose from. We can draw a card from the initialize, or we can play this power. And we're going to play this power, and we're going to hit the mobile defense platform for two projectile damage, plus one. So now this thing has seven health. And then we'll draw a card. Okay, so it's race turn now. All right, let's see what we have for her. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I like this one. Okay. <clears throat> um, we're gonna play impromptu invention. It's a one shot. Draw a card, which we're gonna do. Search your deck for an equipment card and either put it into play or your hand. Shuffle your deck, then you may play a card. So I'm gonna search my deck for an equipment card. And let's see here. I can search. Hmm. Where's it good? Okay. I'm going to play Razor Ordnance. Uh, that way, what did I make this thing? Wait, when did I make this thing the Wrath? The Science and Progress one shot. Razor Ordnance is an equipment limited. The Wraith deals one target, three projectile damage. Compassion is a weakness your enemies will not share. The Wraith, Freedom 5, 540. Alright, so then it says we can play a card. Let's shuffle these back into the deck here. And I can play a card. Let's see. And I'm going to play Smoke Bombs. It's a limited equipment. Whenever a villain card would deal damage to the hero target with the lowest hit point, redirect that damage to the hero target with the highest hit point. Reduce damage redirected this way by one. Legacy says this must, those must be quite handy. The Wraith, quite. Every crime fighter should have some. Freedom 5, 386. Okay. <clears throat> Now I'm going to use a power, and I'm going to deal one target, three projectile damage, which would be four damage. So I'm going to deal four damage to the mobile defense platform, and we have whittled this thing down to three. And then the Wraith is going to draw a card. All right, now we have Tachyon. Let's see what we're going to do for her. Okay, I'm going to do a one-shot, a burst. It's a nimble strike. Tachyon deals one target, one melee damage. You may draw a card. Hi, take that. Don't worry, there's some more. Tachyon, Freedom 5, 271. As you can see, she talks super fast. So I'm actually going to do two damage. And I get to draw a card. Okay. And now I'm going to play my power. And I look at the top card of your hero deck. You may discard that card. Let's see what I want to do with it. No, I don't want to discard it. I'll just keep it there. Okay. And now it's absolute zero. Let's see what we can do here. Hmm. Cold snap. That's not too bad there. Hmm. You may draw a card. I might do this. Okay, I think I'm going to do this. It's an uh, ongoing modular installation. And Absolute Zero has a funny power. It says <clears throat> Absolute Zero does himself one fire, one cold damage. Well, why would you do that? Well, because Absolute Zero can set up to where when he takes fire damage or cold damage, he can either heal or redirect it to somebody else. So he, he's pretty good at that. So we're going we're gonna to play that. We're going to play this. Um, what to wear, what to wear, absolute zero, freedom five annual number four. So we're going to draw a card. Then we're going to search our deck for a module card and put it in our hand. 
Okay. Let's see here. Search our deck for a module card. Okay, I found it. Put it in my hand. And then we'll shuffle those. It says you may play a card. Okay, so let's play a card. We're going to play this. <clears throat> At the start of your turn, Absolute Zero deals each non-hero target one cold damage. Or, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute hold on. Whenever Absolute is dealt fire damage, he deals one target that much cold damage. Okay, I'm going to put this into play. There we go. I'm going to put that module into play. And it's uh, Tachyon. But the laws of thermodynamics have more to do with Absolute Zero. Look, lady, all I know is fire gets all weird around me. Alright, and now we're going to play his power. And now he can deal himself one fire damage. Now, when he's dealt fire damage, he deals one target that much cold damage. So he's going to do himself, actually, he's plus one, so he's going to do himself two damage. But he's going to do two cold damage to the mobile defense platform, and we have taken it out. It took a whole round to do so, but we finally did it. And then Absolute Zero will draw a card, and that is it. Now we go on to the environment turn, and let's see what we get here. Environments can hurt good guys, bad guys, neither, both. So, you know, it just depends on the card. So, we have the Sky deck. It's a level card. When this card enters play, destroy all other level cards. So we're going to have a bunch of levels. Whenever a target is destroyed, put it under its associated deck. So it doesn't go in the trash. It's just going to go under its deck. So there's that. Okay. So now it is a new round. We have Baron Blade's turn. Now, remember at the start of the turn, if there are 15 or more cards, there are not. There's two. So we're going to play a card here. And we're going to get the Blade Battalion. They have five hit points. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest hit points, X melee damage, where X is the current hit point of this card. E. Give me a break, not these guys again. Tachyon Freedom 5, 419. All right, so they're going to do five. They have five health. Okay. All right. Now, uh, what's going to happen is, is I just said we have the, at the end of the villain turn. So, at the end of the villain turn, they're going to do target with the highest hit points, which would be legacy, and they're going to do legacy five damage. Yikes! Because that's the current hit points of this card. But that is the end of Baron Blade's turn. So now we finally get to Legacy's turn. Alright, and we can take these damage delts away, because that ended at the start of the next turn. So let's see here, let's see what cards we have here. Hmm. Hmm, let's see here. Um, whenever Legacy will be dealt five or more damage from a single source, reduce that damage by three. Okay, I think what we'll do is we will play that. Whenever Legacy will be dealt five or more damage from a single source, reduce that damage by three. Superhuman durability, you will never defeat freedom or the human spirit. Legacy, Justice Comics 602. So we're going to play that. We're going to play our power now, and we're going to galvanize again and give everybody plus one damage. And then Legacy is going to draw a card. Okay, so now it's Bunker's turn. And we have, uh, we know we have the grenade launcher. So let's see what card we might want to play now. Hmm. Okay, we're going to play this ammo drop. It's a limited card, it's ongoing. Whenever a villain card is destroyed, you may draw a card, even if a mode card says you cannot. Oh, uh, just what I always wanted bunker, a day in the life bunker. So we'll put that into play. Now we're going to use this power. And we're going to deal one target, two projectile damage, which will be three. And we're going to do Baron Blade three damage. So let's do him three damage. Okay, and then we're going to do a second target three damage, which we're going to do these battalion guys three damage. Okay, and then we're going to draw a card. And that is the end of his turn. Okay, let's see the Wraith here. What do we got? Okay. We are going to do Throat Jab. One shot. The Wraith deals one target, two melee damage. 
The target dealt damage this way cannot deal damage until the start of your next turn. An opportunity well taken is always a weapon of advantage. The Wraith Freedom 5, 299. Okay, so we're going to play that. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that to these guys right here. And we're going to take these guys out. That's three cards there. Alright. And then we're going to use a power. And I hope them dogs will quit barking. Ah, boy. And the Wraith is going to deal one target three projectile damage. It's going to do four. So we're going to do four to Baron Blade. And it's going to... Four. So I put six there. Alright. And then we're going to draw a card. <clears throat> Alright, so it's Tachyon's turn, but I caught an error. When we ble beat the Blade Battalion guys, I put the card in the trash. But if you remember, we have this level card here. It says whenever a target is destroyed, put it under its deck. So it actually helped us out because he's not going to go into trash and count towards trash. So I fixed that. So it's Tachyon's turn. <clears throat> Let me see what I want to do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tachyon has one target, two that. Okay, I'm going to play this burst card, the supersonic response. Tachyon deals one target, two melee damage. If that target dealt Tachyon damage since your last turn, she deals that tar target, two sonic damage. That didn't happen. Seriously, I've got a fairly decent reaction time. Tachyon, Freedom 5, 626. So we're going to deal Baron Blade, three damage. She's plus one, so that's taking him out. And we're going to do a power. Look at the top card of your deck. We can discard it. We won't. And then we're going to draw a card. Okay. So it's Absolute Zero's turn here. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to play this modular. When Absolute Zero would take cold damage, he regains that many hit points. It's the no point calibration unit. Cold is all a matter of perspective. So we're going to play that. And then, we're going to deal ourselves two fire damage, and we're going to deal Baron Blade two cold damage because of that. So that's good. Alright, so we deal ourselves two fire, and we're going to do Baron Blade two cold damage. So let's pop him some more. Alright, and then we're going to draw a card. And then we have the environment turn. Let's see what we have here. We have <clears throat> shield generator. Reduce damage dealt to environment targets by one. So we get six hit points. Okay. And let's see. We do minus, uh, minus one damage taken. We'll put that there. There we go. All right. So it's Baron Blade's turn. He only has two cards in his deck trash pile so we don't have to worry about the start let's play a card all right uh, power remote turret seven hit points device at the end of villain's card this card deals each hero target two projectile damage increased damage dealt by this card by one for each mobile defense platform play arming the platform has been one of my best decisions it's the little things really baron blade freedom five four four nine okay so that thing has seven hit points And each hero will target two projectile damage. All right, all right. So legacy is dealt two. Bunker is dealt two. Uh, let's see here, absolute zero is going to because we have the smoke bombs. It's going to redirect to the target with the highest hit points, which is going to be Bunker, actually. Well, well first, let's do her. Um, she's going to take two, so she's at 24. Okay. And then Absolute Zero would take, he's the one with the lowest. <clears throat> well, yeah, Tachyon would take two, I'm sorry. He would he would be dealt the lowest, but he would only 
take one damage because it's going to get redirected to the target with the highest and the one with the highest right now would be bunker so he's at 25 okay so it's legacy's turn let's see what we can do with legacy okay we're going to play this this is a power it's motivational charge legacy deals one target two melee damage each hero target regains a hit point so I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to play that power. I'm going to deal uh, it be three damage, four damage. We take these off. Four damage because two for that, one for the nemesis, and increased damage dealt by legacy one. So it's four damage to Baron Blade. All right. So it's going to be 21. Okay, and then I draw a card. Okay, Bunker, let's see here. We're going to play this one shot. Uh, environment cards cannot be played until the start of your next turn. So we don't want the environment... messing around here and maybe something bad coming out so we'll put the you cannot play cards over here by the environment and then of course we're doing bunkers power he's gonna deal two projectile damage to Baron blade and he's gonna do two projectile damage to this device And then he can do one projectile damage to the shield generator, but it's minus one, so we're not going to worry about that. And he's going to draw a card. All right, so it's Wraith. Let's see what she wants to do. How about we do another equipment card? Uh, equipment Limited. Uh, increase projectile damage dealt by the Wraith by two. Every instrument is designed to combat crime and share and snare its perpetrators. The Wraith Mystery Comics 214. Okay, and then we'll play our power. And we deal one target three projectile damage, but plus two right there. So that's going to be five damage. So we'll do Baron Blade five damage. <laughs> and she will draw a card. Okay. Hmm. Well, well, well. I want to save that. I really don't want to use that. Let's do this one shot here. Hypersonic Assault. Tachyon deals each non-hero target one sonic damage. Targets dealt damage this way cannot deal damage until the start of your next turn. Okay, well, the shield generator is not going to count because... Uh, it's minus one. However, we can do one to this one. It's four and one to Baron Blade, and they cannot deal damage. So we'll put that there. Stay down, stay down, stay down, stay down, stay down, stay down. <laughs> She'll draw. Uh, well, she gives a power. We can look at the top card. Um. We'll, we'll discard that one, and then she'll draw a card. Okay, so it's Absolute Zero's turn. Hmm. Let's do Focused Apertures. Increased cold damage dealt by Absolute Zero by one. Dr. Stinson's upgrades to the team's equipment led to much greater efficiency in combat. Okay. Alright, so let's see. If I would do... I can do myself two cold damage, and because of the module thing here, that would I would heal two, so I'm going to do that, and I'll draw a card. Okay, it's the environment turn. Uh, they cannot play cards, so that is done. Okay, um, it is now Baron Blade's turn. 
these guys can't deal damage so at the start of the turn we still have two cards there at the end of the, uh, well we're not there yet so let's see what we have here backlash field the first time baron blade is dealt damage by a target each turn baron blade deals that target three lightning damage like lambs to the slaughter baron blade moonfall number four okay huh that won't be until tachyon and then at the end of the turn well that's not going to happen because they cannot deal damage so it's legacy's turn so let's see what i want to do with legacy Let's do uh, Inspiring Presence. It's a limited, ongoing. When this card enters play, each hero target regains one hit point. Okay, so let's do that. Everybody gain a hit point. Okay. Increase damage dealt by hero targets by one. Alright, so we have some damage dealt by one here. And now we're going to play a power and we are going to, of course, play this. Legacy deals one target, two melee damage. Okay, so that's two, three, four if I attack Baron Blade, five. But, however, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this device. We're going to just destroy it with one pop, and it is gone. But because of our Sky Deck card, this card will not go in the trash. It will stay there. Okay. And then uh, Legacy will draw a card. Okay, it's Bunker's turn. <clears throat> see what I want to play here. Uh, I'll do the Omni Cannon. It's an equipment limited. At the start of your turn, you may put up to three cards from your hand beneath this card. Power destroy all cards beneath this card. Bunker deals one target X energy damage, where X is equals two times the number of cards destroyed. Gotta remember to look away when he starts charging up that beam cannon. Absolute zero, freedom five, annual five. Okay. And then, of course, we're going to play a power. We're going to deal two projectile damage to Baron Blade. Which actually would be three damage. Now, the first time Baron is dealt damage, Baron deals that target three lightning damage. But he can't deal damage. So that was pretty good. So we'll do three to him. And two. And there we go. And Bunker will draw a card. Okay, the Wraith. Let's see what she's got here. Alright. I'll probably play Throwing Knives. It's an equipment card. The Wraith deals up to three targets one projectile damage each. And you know what I forgot is ammo drop. Whenever a villain card is destroyed, you can you may uh, may draw a card. So he's gonna draw a card for that. Okay, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this one. The wrong person in the right place can make all the difference. The Wraith Sunrise number four. And I'm gonna deal Baron Blade five damage actually it's going to be six because of plus one so six damage to baron blade he's down to four hit points he's really taking a beating but we kind of knew that was going to happen <clears throat> and then she's going to draw a card okay so it's tachyon's turn now and there is that card huh we're going to play this burst card blinding speed destroy one environment card or one ongoing card did you know that localized winds of over 300 knots will pretty much instantly pull, put out any flame? Tachyon, Freedom 591. Okay, and we're going to get rid of this ongoing card. So it is done. But it's going to go at the bottom of the deck. That sky card is really helping us, but now they can deal damage. Okay, we'll play a power, and we'll look at the top card. Yeah, we'll keep we'll, we'll keep that there. And now it's absolute zero's turn. 
Let's see what he wants to do. Okay, we have a one shot here, so let's play this. Absolute zero. Deals one target, two cold damage. Alright, which is going to be three, four cold damage. So let's do that. We're going we're gonna to do four cold damage to Baron Blade. Then it says absolute zero deals a second target to fire damage. Okay, it's going to be three uh, minus one for this. So this guy is down to three. Shield generator. All right, and then absolute deals himself. Absolute zero does himself one cold and one fire damage. Now he will take the one for the fire. Okay. Actually, it's going to be two for fire. Right? One cold damage and one fire. Huh. Now he's plus one. Okay. So he's going to do. Well, I guess I guess he would do two fire to himself. That's a little weird, but okay, he's two fire because he's plus one. So he's going to do himself two fire. Then he's, but whenever he would do fire, he can deal one target that much cold damage. So it's going to be three cold damage to Baron Blade, and we we've beaten Baron Blade. However, we have to flip his character card, and we'll go over that in a second. As you can see now, he's got his power suit here. Now he's going to do himself two cold damage. Now whenever he but it's going to increase it by three and so what's going to happen is he's going to fully heal so he's back up to 29 okay and that was that one shot and I said this is going to hurt you so much more than will hurt me absolute zero science of progress one shot now we can play a power and he will deal one himself one fire damage which is going to be two fire damage and that's going to damage Baron Blade, who's got 30 now. 25, 30. But we're going to do two. Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to draw a card. Let's look at Baron Blade real quick. It says, Vengeful Mad Scientist. When flipped to this side, restore Baron Blade to 30 hit points. Then, put the villain trash on top of the villain deck. Put all three copies of the mobile defense form platform into the villain trash. Shuffle the villain deck. So, no more mobile defense platform. So, this is just going to go right there. At the end of villain turn, Baron Blade deals the hero target with the highest hit points, H energy damage. So, we don't have to worry about the trash getting 15 cards. No, nope. anytime a mobile defense platform will come out, we'll just put it in the trash because it's not, it's not, we can't use it anymore. So that's what Baron Blade is going to do. But remember, we have the environment turn, finally. And let's see what we get. A battalion Gunner, this guy's three. Okay. It says, at the end of the environment turn, this card deals each hero target one energy damage. Okay. So, uh, there's a card fail there. Oh. Okay, so let's see here. Um, so, Legacy is going to take one. So, is that 24? Okay. Um, Bonker's going to take one. The Wraith is going to take one. And remember, it's not a villain card, it's the environment card, so we don't have to worry about that thing. Tachyon will take one. And Absolute Zero will take one. Okay, so that's it for that. Now, it's Baron Blade's turn. So we're going to play a card, he has no start. And this is Baron Blade regains 10 hit points. Well, <clears throat> he's only going to regain f enough to get five more. At the end of the villain turn, Baron Blade there's a hero target with the highest hit points, H energy damage. Now, it's the way they scale this game. 
you're going to notice that H in the playthroughs, and that's how many heroes there are. So the more heroes there is, the more damage there's going to be. So he's going to deal the hero target with the highest hit points, five energy damage. <clears throat> All right, now the one with the highest hit points is absolute zero. And he's going to take five damage. So, Baron Blade, he's now in his suit, put a wallop on him. Okay, that is the end of the turn. So now it's Legacy's turn, <clears throat> and we can play a card. Hmm. I think I'm going to play Bolster Allies, one shot. Each player draws a card. We fight this day for freedom. Legacy, Freedom 5, Annual 8. So each player can now draw a card. And that's what we do. Now Legacy's got a power here. <clears throat> Alright. And uh, remember everybody's still increased by one because that ongoing card is in play. Uh, he deals one target two melee damage. So if he is Baron Blade, that's two, plus one is the Nemesis, plus one is three, and another one is five. So he's going to do five damage to Baron Blade. And every hero target will regain one hit point. Okay. And then Legacy will <clears throat> draw a card. <clears throat> okay, so Bunker's going to play a card. Hmm. Okay, we're going to play this adhesive foam grenade. It's a one-shot. Not all heavy weapons do massive damage. Environment cards cannot be played until the start of your next turn. We're going to play that again. We're taking this environment out. So, we cannot play cards. It's here. Then he's going to do his power. And he's going to do the uh, grenade launcher again and I think what we're going to do is we're going to deal three damage to Baron Blade that puts him at 22 okay and we're going to do three damage to this guy which is going to destroy him well actually it's not we, we're reducing damage so he's down to one and we're going to do one damage to the shield generator Okay, and then we're going to draw a card. Okay, it's the race turn. Hmm. I want to do Trust Fund. One shot, draw four cards and discard two cards. Mask or no mask, the Wraith is still the Wraith. Mr. Fixer, Transmission of Honor number two. So I'm going to draw four cards. I want to discard two. I think I already have. I'll discard that one. And I'll discard this one. Okay. And now I'm going to play my power. And I'm going to do three projectile damage to Baron Blade. Plus two is five. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this one. The Wraith deals up to three targets, one projectile damage each, which is going to be two, three, four. Four damage. So we're killing this guy. We're doing two to the shield generator, and, well, that's gone. And now we're doing Baron Blade that much damage. Okay. And then I'll draw a card. Okay, it's Tachyon's turn. Hmm. Okay, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ongoing research grant. Draw two cards, this card, a guard, card, uh, so close, just a few weeks from a real tangible conclusion. Tachyon, Science of Progress, one shot. So I uh, draw two cards. I'm gonna play that power, and I'll discard a card. Discard any card I want. And I'll discard that one. I just got it. 
and then I'll draw another card. Okay, so it's Absolute Zero's turn. So let's see what we do here. I'm going to play Cold Snap. It's a limited card. At the start of your turn, Absolute Zero deals each non-hero target one cold damage. This is just like Whack-A-Mole, but with stupider targets. Absolute Zero, Freedom 5, 247. So we'll start doing that. And I'm going to play a Power. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do myself one fire damage, which would be two fire damage. So I'm going to take two fire damage. And then I can do myself, then because of this, I can do one target that much cold damage, which I would increase it by one. So I do Baron Blade three cold damage. Okay. And then I will take a card. And now it's the environment turn, which I cannot play cards. So we're done. So now it's Baron Blade's turn. He has no start of the game effect. So let's see what card he gets here. Living Force Field, reduced damage dealt to Baron Blade by one. I'm hardly amused by your worthless attempts at competence. Baron Blade, Freedom 5, 124. And then at the end of the villain turn, Baron Blade deals a hero target with the highest hit points, five energy damage. That would be... 26, that would either be Tachyon or Bunker. It's 25. 22. 25 so I will do let's do Tachyon Tachyon will take that 5 damage that's 20 damage ok and now it is the hero's turn it's legacy's turn let me see if I want to play a card Okay, I'll play this ongoing card. Next evolution. There's the newest legacy there. Ongoing legacy immune to the type of damage of your choice until the start of the next turn. Uh, like her father, Pauline Felicia Parsons inherited all legacy's powers and also developed some new abilities. It's all right. So we'll say energy damage. That seems to be the flavor going around. And now, uh, legacy will do Baron Blade. Uh, we're going to use this power here. Two, three, four, five, minus one is four. So we're going to do four damage to him. Okay. And every hero is going to regain a hit point. Actually, yeah, she's at 26. Okay. It's 26. Two. Okay, and then he will draw a card. It's Bunker's turn. Let's see here. I'm going to play this equipment card, maintenance unit. Bunker regains two hit points. Yeah, I could use a tune up Bunker. Freedom 5, 151. So we'll do that. Alright, and then we know he's going to play um, this right here. It's actually going to be three damage. Uh, minus one. On Baron Blade, so it's only going to be two. And then we'll draw a card. Okay. Grappling Hook, one shot. Destroy one ongoing or environment card. You may draw a card. Be prepared is all about having the right tool for the job. So we're going to destroy this Living Force Field card. We're going to draw a card. And then we're going to play this right here one target, three projectile. Five, six, six damage to Baron Blade. So Baron Blade is almost dead. Maybe we can kill him by the end of this turn. <clears throat> and then she'll draw a card. It's Tachyon's turn. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to play this Nimble Strike. Uh, Tachyon deals one target, one melee damage. You may draw a card. That means he's going to take two damage. Let's see, I'll play a power. I'll draw two cards and discard a card. Let's see. I'll discard that one. 
and I'll take that one. And then I'll draw another card. Okay, it's absolute zero's turn. And now, at the start of his turn, he deals each non-hero target one cold damage, two cold damage, three cold damage. So, three cold damage to, absolute, to Baron Blade. And, let's see... Okay, I think what I'm going to do is we're just going to go ahead and play this one shot. Absolute zero deals one target, two cold damage, and that's going to kill Baron Blade. All right. Wow. Baron Blade is dead. <laughs> we, I think the Freedom Five work very well with each other. Baron Blade is not dead. Baron Blade has been defeated. But as we know, all good villains will come back, and you will see Baron Blade again a couple times. Because Baron Blade is basically the main nemesis. Um, so that's where we are in the story. The Freedom Five just stopped Baron Blade from destroying the world out of a mad vengeance attempt to kill Legacy. Uh, they worked well as a unit. This was probably their first test run. And uh, this team does play very well together. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the, way, the new way I'm playing it. And we're going to try to keep playing it like this and maybe even get a little bit better each time. So until next time, I will see you then. Have fun.